Good morning, everyone. Greetings from this beautiful country, island of Sri Lanka. I born. Wanakam. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to inauguration session of IEEE ICIF 2021. Well, today is the official date. And of course, I know that more, uh, nearly 50 countries all over the world, different climatic zone, of course, different time zone. Early in the morning, we get something important we called IBOAN. It is very important in the context of today. Uh, uh, in Sri Lankan, traditionally, we call IBOAN mean long live, be happy. And therefore, today, we need more health, more vitality, more happiness. Therefore, it is very good context. Welcome all of you, say IBOA. Okay, let's start. What we do, who are we, and what is the purpose of International Conference for Information, Automation, and Sustainability? Well, if you talk about IEEE, it is the largest professional and technological professional body in the world which has a mission of bring machine and human coexistence and bring the sustainability of the mother nature, mother earth. And therefore, the midst of UN environmental report tell us a kind of a very, very groomy nature. As a human being, we need to be very mindful about sustainability, very much mindful about what we are going to do as a human being and what to, what would be our world. We have only one place to go, go that is the earth. Therefore, IEEE mission itself tell us a story. We need to go with innovation, creativity in every aspect of life, yet we need to bring up the most important sustainability. Now, let's come back to IEEE what they do, what they bring. They bring the research, they bring the technology, they bring the computing, they bring the different walks of life of engineering, enhancement, innovation. Everything will focus on humanity. Now, when you say humanity, today we need to get into the more broad aspect of world, not only us, every living being in this world. Therefore, even in this particular session, if you see, we have ICIFS very, very long history, starting from 2006, from China to Australia, so many times in Colombo and different cities and different uh, uh, South Asian nations. We work so many times, this bring innovation to the life. Therefore, I think we are now in now in the verge of new sessions. We conduct yesterday tutorial, people from different uh, sectors, categories, they came and show their understanding in in-depth knowledge. Therefore, ICIFS 2021 also keeping up the good spirit the founding father aimed at. Therefore, I think we are continuing the good work. And ICIFS 2021, this time collaborated with one of the finest universities, I would say one of the youngest, maybe youngest university in the country, Sri Lanka Technological Campus. Sri Lankan Technological Campus, Center for Telecommunication Research, School of Postgraduate Studies and Research, and all the faculty members, everyone in this university got together, made this very decisive and very important conference uh, make a reality. Therefore, SLTC uh, co-hosting, co-financing this particular program. And also, you know that, ICIFS is always looking at a different uh, levels. The six tracks you may find. We have a six tracks which 
young people, not so young people, contributing for the future of this world. Communication, broadcasting, computing and processing, power, energy and industry applications, robotics and controlling system, signal processing and automation, machine learning, sustainability, so on and so forth. Therefore, if you see the tracks itself is telling us the story. Therefore, I think we have done a sufficient introduction. I think it's very correct time to get on with today's agenda. Well, it's a privilege to invite Professor Dush Jayakwadi, General Kocha, ICI AFS 21. 2021. Professor Dushjaikudi, over to you, sir. Uh, uh, dear Professor, I think there is an audible problem. Uh, there is a small technical issue. Give us a one minute, Professor. Yeah, Prof, you are muted, sir. You have to unmute. Sir, I, we can't hear you. You are muted. You have to unmute. Sir, you are muted, Professor Dush. Bottom of the screen. Can you hear, sir? Can you speak, Professor? But you are muted, sir. <laughs> Give me a second. We are, we, are, we are looking at this. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Am I audible? That's right. You can start from the beginning, sir. Yes. Okay. Very good. Audible. Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, the chief guest, Mr. Jayanta De Silva, Secretary of the Ministry of Technology, President SLTC, Engineer Ranjit Rukasinghe, <laughs> Vice Chancellors of University of Colombo and University of Representatives of Commanders of Army, Navy and Air Force, Mr. Uh, PM Dharmatilaka, Director General Research, State Ministry of Skills Development, Vocational Education, Research and Innovation, Chairman of Sri Lanka Telecom, Mr. Rohan Fernando. Chairman National Professor Anjit Senaratna. Chairman National Research Council, Professor Dodam Pahala. Mrs. Renuka Fernando, Group uh, Chief Digital Services Officer, Dialogue Aksatria PLC. Council members and academic advisor, Professor KKYW Pereira. All members of the Council. All members of the Senate of SLTC, distinguished keynote speakers and tutorial speakers, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to all of you. The theme of the landmark chapter of ICIFS 2021 is Endowing Intelligence Sustainability, Forcing on Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Based Emerging Technologies to Improve and Foster Research in Sri Lanka and our region. As Industry 4 unfolds, smart computers, machines are connected and communicate with one another to eventually make decisions without human intervention. It includes cyber physical systems, Internet of Things, cloud computing, augmented reality, cognitive radio, and intelligent wireless. So this event is proudly hosted by the Postgraduate School we call it School of Postgraduate Studies and Research of SLTC, together with uh, Center for Telecommunication Research at, at SLTC, where I'm serving as the head. It has indeed given me a great pleasure to address you in this morning. 
and it is a our one and a half years continuous efforts. The organizing task of the conference has taken a significant time and energy of our entire organizing committee, which comprises of academics from local and international communities. To make this event a success, many of our daily event agenda was ICIFS. For the last months, uh, the slow life was ICIFS. We went to bed with the same slogan and we got up in the morning with the same slogan. We had tons of meetings and tons of discussion. There were a lot of changes. The pandemic and we were able to uh, cross them through. And I first express my greatest gratitude to the board of directors of ICIFS, Professor Trish, Dr. Sanjeeva, and Professor Rohan. I met Professor Rohan at the ninth chapter of ICIFS on 21st December 2018 at Galadari Hotel, Colombo. So I took the opportunity to host the 10th landmark event that you are enjoying today. Uh, so uh, when I got this first consent from the board of directors, I rang our uh, beloved president, Engineer Ruba Singer, on the and I asked about uh, his permission about hosting the conference. He said, as always, do you go ahead. So that was the uh, initial moment that the all organizing effort initiated. So uh, till today, our president has been a supporting pillar for our resource, for our for offering our resources, research and innovation activities of the campus. And also his passion to reshape SLTC as a research-based university in Sri Lanka rewarded us many. Um, we many uh, Sri Lankans who trained abroad uh, had no foothold in the country. So with the passion of the president, SLTC uh, research-based university, which 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 gave uh, immense uh, pleasure and also a place to work for researchers who are trained abroad. So my sincere thanks also goes to uh, Mr. Han Fernando, Chairman of Sri Lanka Telecom PLC, for presenting and supporting many of our events at the school, including this event. Also, my thanks goes to Mrs. Renuka Fernando, Group Chief Digital Services Officer. Dialogue Asiata PLC for presenting in this forum. I also thank Professor Rui Dinis from University of New Lisbon, Portugal, uh, the TPC chair of this conference for his great support to complete the review process. It was doubtlessly a resource for me. Needless to say, I really appreciate and honor the over 400 reviewers who supported us to complete the review process. Each paper that you will be engaging in this conference has been reviewed at least three times, three uh, reviewers, and their all service is on the volunteer basis. And I also thank special session chair, Professor Ionis Krikidis from Cyprus, and Dr. Migar Kaunaratne from SLTC for their untiring efforts to facilitate all the special sessions. Also, Dr. Gopi, Dr. Ch uh, Chamile, Dr. Damayanti, for organizing special sessions at this conference. I must thank uh, our distinguished academics who agreed to offer uh, keynotes and tutorial sessions of this conference, which made the conference really a remarkable and technically uh, strong conference in this island. My sincere thanks to distinguished keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Shu from, uh, from Huawei, Canada, senior vice president, Professor Ola Pili, Vice President, UCD Island, yeah, and Chair Ali. of Engineers Ali. Island. And Dr. Migar Professor Sridhar Mahadevan, Director of Data Science Lab, Adobe University of Massachusetts, US. Sure. Professor Marco Dr. Renzo, CNRS Research Ali. Director, France. Distinguished tutorial speakers, Professor Ionis Pritas, University of Thessaloniki, Greece. Professor Walid Saad, Virginia Tech US, Professor Saman Halgamuge, University of Melbourne, Australia, Professor Sanjeev Maitri Parat, our own colleague at SLTC. 
I must also thank Mr. Jayanta De Silva, Secretary of Ministry of Technology, for keynote talk at this opening ceremony. He will be share his vision on the roadmap of reshaping the future technology-driven education of Sri Lanka. We are presenting 104 papers in this conference over six tracks, and also there will be three special sessions with a very high competitive and robust review process with an acceptance ratio of 45. So having a 45 percentage of acceptance ratio is a quite challenging task, and especially a conference in this region. So we had to turn down many good papers in order to maintain the technical rigidity and also our acceptance ratio of this conference. There were times that at TPC meetings, we rejected quite good papers, even though they passed through the review process in order to maintain a high quality technical program that you are witnessing today. So in addition, I must also thank actually my colleagues at SLTC, Dr. Nanda Gunawardena, Director of Research and School Heads and the Faculty Heads of SLTC and Head of Finance, Head of HR and other all supporting bodies. And my sincere thanks goes to ICIFS Publication Committee Chair, Professor Ruan Udeanga, University of Moratua, and Dr. Nadisha Okwatagi at SLTC for their all support to organize the conference program book. Dr. Nadisha spent sleepless nights in preparing this book that we are enjoying today. And in addition, Sumali, Samantha, Dr. Valmik, and Dr. Rajkumar from SLTC for serving on the team. So our registration chair, we call it one and only Leslie, and his team, my PhD students, Akila, Vishaka, and Chaturanga, you return a wonderful service. Leslie, you always make us laugh with many jokes and make the workflow very smooth when we are suffering from anxiety and the work stress. So entire non-academic staff members, headed by my colleague, Mrs. Professor Amaravardhana, and her team members, Sadipa, Gihan, Nuan, Samantha, thank you very much for your support. And thank for your great support to make the visibility and the local organizing efforts. And I must also thank Gihan, the creative giant, and I owe, you a, I owe you in big time. Though this is a virtual conference, but today at the Paduk, our main campus of SLTC is served by nearly 25 staff members within the, uh, this, though we have the pandemic situation in the country. So I must thank all of them who came to Paduk and uh, committed for their service. Uh, I must especially mention my colleague, Oshadi Jayaratne, the previous project coordinator of postgraduate school for his initial support and getting an iconic website done for ICFS. So one of the unique feature of this program is industry business forum that is chaired by Professor Trish from Imperial College London and my colleague, uh, Mr. Leslie Udovidani with his uh, constant smile as always and thanks for putting this forum together the forum is organized with the great support of dr hashita munasinghe and somali morapiti at sltc i am indebted to mr manu uh, ratnayaka executive vice president chief information officer and business process excellence this forum serves as the game changer of redefining the digital ecosystem of sri lanka using public private partnerships also, I extend my warm gratitude to Mrs. Kosambika, Executive Secretary to the President, for her support in, in organizing this inauguration ceremony. And I must also thank my PhD student, Lieutenant Commander Arunapriya. Thanks, Arunapriya, for your continuous engagement in this activity and your patience. Hats off for your efforts. Our efforts, uh, our efforts would, would not be possible without the great, head, uh, great support of our beloved IT team. So thanks, Charit and your team. So they are continuously working in the back end to host this virtual conference with 400 plus participants. So Shashi, Manu, Yasas, and Venerable Vadupala, Kalindu, and Seniru, uh, uh, and all of you, thank you very much. So finally, my beloved team, ICIFS Local Organizing Committee, my students, Dr. Tarindu Pereira, Hassan Haider, Sumali, Chaturanga, Vishaka, Prashant, Anurapriya, and Akila. Can you turn on your mics? And also my colleague, uh, Samantha, Dr. Nadisha, Dr. Migara, Dr. Hashita, and Leslie, uh, Ms. Deepika, 
Miss Anushka and Mr. Sangi from Bhutan. Uh, could you please turn on your mic? You deserve a salutation in this inauguration ceremony for your uh, continuous support. <laughs> Uh, finally, I thank everyone who supported us in this event. So I may not be able to uh, tell their all the names, but I must thank everyone who supported in a number of uh, ways. Uh, before I end up this talk, I need to mention two individuals who made this conference a real success, who spent their day and night to preparing all the conference materials and all the attending details. The professionalisms that you see in this conference, thanks to, thanks to uh, these two giants. So they work as my, you know, the left hand and the right hand. Okay, we are back again for the very important session and we are continuing to do so. And let me invite a very important person who leading our university and university itself, the vision and mission itself, tell us something very, very important link between ICIFS and the uh, IEEE. We all are into the innovation or inculcate research culture in this country. Therefore, one man who always had this vision and he encourage and give us an opportunity as an individual, as a, as a group. Okay, we are back. In, okay. Therefore, we are I think we, are we should be able to talk to people, to, able to listen to Mr. Ranjit Rupasinghe, leading our university, founder, and president, itself, and CEO. The vision and mission itself. Tell us the Sri Lanka Technological Campus ICIFS and the uh, IEEE. We all are into the innovation or inculcate research culture in this country. Therefore, one man who always has this vision and he encouraged. Mr. PM Dharma Tilaka, Director General, uh, State Minister of Vocational Education, Research and Innovation. 
Chairman Sri Lanka Te Telecom, uh, Chairman National uh, Science Foundation, Chairman National Research Council. Mrs. Renuka Fernando, Group Chief Digital Services Officer, Dialogue Axiata. And all members of SLTC University Council, all members of the Senate, and uh, keynote speakers, Dr. Zhu, uh, Professor Feely, and Professor Mahadevan, uh, Professor Marco, and distinguished uh, tutorial speakers, Professor Ritas, and Professor Halgamke, and uh, Professor Maitri Pala, of Director, Academic Affairs of SLTC. Chairman, National and Council. General Co Chairs of the Conference, Professor Apes, and our own Professor Dush Jayakodi. Ladies and gentlemen, and my dear and, uh, colleagues of SLT and all the uh, others, uh, Professor participants. And Professor I'm really Pini. grateful to address all of the distinguished invitees in this important forum. At the occasion of the inauguration of the International Conference on and Automation for Sustainability, organized by the SLTC under the theme of Intelligent Sustainability. Honorable Chief Guest, ladies and gentlemen, the theme for the landmark chapter Endowing Intelligent Sustainability, focusing on artificial intelligence and machine learning, based on technologies to improve and foster research in Sri Lanka and the region. As Industry 4.0 unfolds, Statement. Briefly mentioned about SLTC. SLTC provides many opportunities to conduct research innovations, even through collaborations to generate new knowledge for all our academics and researchers. The School of Postgraduate Studies and Research, who hosts this conference, plays a key role with the support of the office. The most and one of the top international conferences in the world, which is hosted by SLTC this time, which is a great privilege for us. This landmark event that we host witnessed the research and innovation reputation of SLTC within the region. Ladies and gentlemen, the conference focuses on sustainable development through endowing intelligent sustainability in which we seek deliberations on effective output. So I believe this is a truly unique platform for the conference in which participants will present papers, network for future collaborations, share expertise, experience and knowledge among the young researchers and industry participants. Dear friends, the idea of sustainable development through research and innovation is the SLTC's vision and this has become a global agenda. And in this forum, we are talking of sustainable development goals adapted by the United Nations. Among the 17 goals that have been declared by the United Nations to be achieved by the year 2030, industry, innovation, and infrastructure is explained under goal nine. During this conference, it will be discussed, ideas will be shared, and very constructive arguments will be entertained focusing on achieving the UN goal. Build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation for sustainable development. Industry and academic experts share the newest technology know-how 
research findings in the field of information communication and automation during this conference today and tomorrow. In the near future, we hope they will be at the implementation stage towards achieving UN Sustainable Development Goals. Therefore, it is my trust that the presentations and the discussions in this conference will embrace such global aspirations which are also very much in line with the vision of our university. I am humbly proud that SLTC offers this world-class conference with the support of many distinguished academics around the world with 36 technical sessions under six technical tracks. Industry Business Forum would offer a great platform for redefining Sri Lanka's digital economy. I strongly believe that the initiatives of this kind will be immensely impacted on the SLTC in boosting our image among the international scientific and research community as a research driven university in the region. Dear friends, in my view, we need to realize the importance of promoting knowledge, innovations we come up with and the technology we develop to be used meaningfully by researching the end users or put into practical use. I would like to extend an open invitation to all the conference participants and distinguished academics to get hand in hand with us and keep this dialogue moving and also develop research collaboration with our in-house researchers to face the challenges together. In conclusion, appreciate the support we have received from TPU in Russia, INRS Canada, University of New, University of New Lisbon, Portugal. Honorable Minister of Education, thank you very much for your guidance and also recognizing this valuable initiative. Our guest of honors, the participants and all invited guests. May I also extend my sincere thanks for the organizing committee, <coughs> Professor Dush and his team for working hard to make this conference a great success. My best wishes for everybody and stay safe and healthy. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, building ecosystem for the university and encouraging and financing future investment with collaboration with IEEE and ICIFS 2021. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have a rare honor to, to act upon our SLT Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka Telecom Group Chairman, Mr. Rohan Fernando. Of course, he is extremely busy with uh, pre-planned meetings. And therefore, he was kind enough to send these greetings. And therefore, I'm here to read his message. I hope I will do the justification to him. Sri Lanka Telecom Group Chairman speech for the inauguration ceremony of IEEE ICI AFS 2021. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Minister GL Pires, Ministry of Education, Mr. Jayanta De Silva, Secretary to the Ministry of Technology, Mr. Ranjit Rupasinghe, Chief Executive Officer, Sri Lanka Technological Campus, and other distinguished speakers and invitees. Firstly, I am honored to be invited as a guest of honor for the inauguration ceremony of IEEE ICIAFS 2021 conference organized by Sri Lanka Technological Campus. As the new normal demands, we are connected online without physical contact. Thanks to technology, the next meeting, I am sure, will be on a hologram virtual reality. Now, that's advancement in technology. We are somewhat fortunate to live in a period where revolutionary changes are taking place in everything we do. The things considered essential for human life, health care, education, communication,
transportation, entertainment have all evolved during our lifetime and continue to evolve. This possible due to advancement in technology where a message can travel at the speed of light using fiber optics. I am told that the conference will discuss subjects which are pertinent for a development of the digital space involving technology, advancement in technology with artificial intelligence, robotics and internet of things are evolving at a space difficult to keep up with. Sri Lanka under the leadership of His Excellency the President is fast moving towards digitalization of the country for greater efficiency in the public service and areas of commerce and utilities. With the availability of knowledge and connectivity and lightning speed, especially with 5G technology and with the introduction of robotics in manufacturing, artificial intelligence in handling complex tasks in areas such as the judiciary, education, health, agriculture and e-commerce. The digital footprint will expand to far corners of the island sooner than later. Sri Lanka Telecom, the pioneer in national tele telecommunication provider, is moving in this direction to provide connectivity, support, services required for digitalization Sri Lanka. Several initiatives have already been implemented to in induce much needed technology in the fields of mentioned above. The conference, I believe, will bring out new ideas and solutions which can be particularly implemented using high-end technology. One of the areas which need immediate which need immediate attention is manufacturing platforms, where robotics intervention can bring in precision and special manufacturer for value addition to enter foreign markets on a competitive platform. 5G communication rollout already in motion will be a boost in this regard. With the infusion of technology and envisaged by the organizer of this conference, Sri Lanka can look forward to develop knowledge cum technology hub in the Indian Ocean supported by well-trained IT experts. May I wish the conference success and thank the organizers for the initiative taken at crucial time of information towards technological empowered island nation. Thank you, Rohan Fernando. Ladies, gentlemen, and my friends, academics, students all over the, from the world, that is our Sri Lanka Telecom Group Chairman, Mr. Rohan Fernandu. Message read by your compeer and the moderator, Leslie Udwavidan. Let's move into the next chapter. That, of course, bringing again technology to the table. How we can, in the digital transformation, we see the prime movers. Without those prime movers, Sri Lankan digitization and digital transformation just only a thought. Thereby, I would like to invite Mrs. Renuka Fernando, Group Chief Digital Service Officer, Dialogue Asiata PLC, better known Dialogue from Sri Lanka. Over to you, ma'am, Mrs. Renuka Fernando. Uh, I hope I am audible. Yes, ma'am, very well. Thank you. Um, good morning to the conference chair, uh, distinguished panel of guest of honors, 
invitees and other participants. Firstly, uh, thank you very much to the SLTC and IEEE, ICIAFS for inviting dialogue to the inauguration ceremony of this conference. With the unprecedented global impact of COVID-19, this year's conference theme on endowing intelligent sustainability, I think, is an important one because the after COVID, we may now very well be at the inflection point where technology becomes the impetus to drive sustainable development. Of course, it goes without saying um, that over the last few years, uh, there has been a rapid evolution of technology with things like AI, robotics, um, IoT, blockchain, even 3D printing, gene editing, and 5G. The list goes on. Uh, these have become buzzwords in this landscape. Some of these have already began to impact our daily lives and has massive potential to make a profound impact on sustainable development. As you know, meeting the UN 2030 agenda on the sustainable development goals have less than 10 years to go. Sri Lanka is a signatory to it, as is the region. Using these technologies combined with data and other sciences are critical tools we need to use if we are to leapfrog our capabilities as a country and as a region. For developing countries such as Sri Lanka, things like AI, blockchain and 5G can really play a significant role in fast tracking us towards our sustainable development goals and bringing cost effective solutions. These solutions typically help us to scale rapidly, increase productivity and make more precision decisions, which take out the waste of human application. It will help us to connect people and make the benefits of technology accessible to the populations who have been so far left behind. For example, in healthcare, simple cost-effective solutions through mobile application can today deliver high-end medical diagnosis and access to medicines in the rural to the rural masses while more sophisticated AI and wearable related technology can predict and prevent or monitor and manage long-term diseases such as diabetes and heart disease. These have already started to impact our lives, but we need to enhance and scale the adoption so it's not available only to the privileged few. We can use AI for perhaps predicting um, environmental risks such as dengue fever outbreaks, for example, based on weather patterns and other environmental data so that early preventive measures can be taken. Connected healthcare infrastructure and planning solutions can give us better and efficient management of our scarce medical infrastructure and resources. These are all possible without huge capital investments in infrastructure and expensive technology. The Sri Lankan corporate sector should be encouraged to invest in these solutions, not as CSR activities, but as real market disruptive business cases that can stand on their own right. There is huge potential for AI in terms of our goals towards food security and increased agriculture productivity with sustainable practices. Machine learning algorithms today, together with technology, imaging technology using satellites and drones can make an impact on the entire farming life cycle and weather predictions. With weather predictions, information on soil conditions and nutrients and precision application of pesticides and fertilizer, which has become the big dilemma in Sri Lanka today. We can enable farmers to access the information through their mobile phones, through apps, or for those with feature phones, because Sri Lanka is still we have to understand practically, still a number of people, even with smartphones, use USSD. We can still make that information accessible through USSD and SMS, enabling them to better manage their crops and make decisions which lend towards sustainable practices. In fact, at Dialog, we have started the journey with solutions such as Govimitru and Sayuru, which give farmers and fishermen access to information and advice based on weather conditions. Also, we have IoT solutions like SARU, uh, which reads data on humidity and light and temperature data and automates the irrigation and fertilizer application based on these algorithms for green crop, uh, greenhouse crops. 
So as you can see, there are so many different ways in which these technologies can be adopted to meet our socioeconomic goals on a sustainable platform. However, if, there are, uh, if we are to really leverage these potentials as a country or as a whole region, there are a number of areas we need to address. We need to bring greater data access for researchers without compromising users' personal privacy. We have to get the right balance between these two. Too much of regulations will hamper research. Too much of openness can have other downsides. So we have to get the balance right. We have to ask ourselves if we have the wide expertise and skills needed in our region and in our country to build and leverage these tools. Also, will the adoption of technology threaten traditional jobs that may become redundant by the use of technology, especially the threat it poses to our competitiveness as a country and a region on the traditional economic model? So we urgently need to look at changing our education strategy to transform our workforce to the skills needed in the 21st century, or we will be left behind. The other important aspect is that government and regulators have to understand the potential of these tools and make the necessary investments and regulatory changes needed to enable research and build the infrastructure needed for adoption of these solutions. We also need to have a government, sorry, a governance framework which ensures that technology does not create even a wider gap in the problems that we are trying to solve. We have to make sure that technology is accessible for everyone and make sure that there is human oversight and control on the way we build our AI models and algorithms, which cannot bring biases. So these are some of the issues we have to address in this region and globally. Some of the um, uh, industrialized countries are already looking at these problems. We have to urgently look at these problems. Obviously, there are no silver bullets or quick fixers to these challenges. But as a country and as a region, we need to explore the answers and have a roadmap at policy level to address them. Conference like, conferences like this um, are very, very important uh, to, to discuss and brainstorm and bring solutions to the table, practical solutions to the table. So I wish uh, this conference all the very best um, and thank the organizers uh, for inviting us and actually for organizing it uh, so well. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. That's that's uh, that's what we need. And uh, as a prime mover of this country, who's provide fantastic service to the nation, we really appreciate your contribution for the future. And if, of course, you bring uh, future today. Thank you very much. Well, let's move to the next session, next speech. I think uh, he is the one of the few people. Uh, take this country's future as a prime mover in digital transformation. And he himself is a person who will, who has uh, knowledge and the experience behind him in ICT and the digital transformation. Therefore, it's a, it's a very much honor to me to inviting invitation itself. It's an honor to tell you the truth. This is uh, all about Mr. Jayant De Silva, who is Secretary to the Ministry of Technology. And I would like to invite you, sir, over to you for your speech. Yes, sir, you can start now.
So you are not audible. Still we have a problem, sir. I think you are not muted also. Yeah, we can't hear you. Give us a few seconds, sir. If you give us a few seconds, please. Good morning. Yes. Now audible, sir. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And let me first uh, uh, offer my appreciation for all who have been responsible for arranging this conference. And I hope that you, I'm audible and you can hear me well. Yes, sir. Uh, very well. The Sri Lankan government uh, eight months ago uh, having understood the potential and the huge responsibility identified technology as one of the key areas and the government established a ministry of technology headed by our president himself since then uh, i've heard uh, i heard a lot of speakers before uh, explaining the requirements, explaining what what would happen in the future, talking about technology. Uh, so I would rather concentrate on on explaining what we are doing and that we have done uh, at the moment during the last eight months. We have totally understood uh, the need of technology, and we do understand that Sri Lanka being a third world country, uh, the only way for us to move from a third world country to a first world country is technology. As such, we have commenced some very transforming uh, projects uh, planned uh, for, for the near future as well as on the long term. The first project that we started and identified was the national digital IT. The requirement of a digital IT is extremely important as all of you would ex uh, 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 accept. We are going ahead with the project and we are very confident that we would have one of the most reliable and most sophisticated digital ID system in the world. We are right on track and we are hoping the second quarter of next year, we would be able to issue 16 million digital IDs for all our citizens. This would also pay for many other areas that we have planned in the near future. We have identified 12 such large projects and I would explain a few of them to you. One of, the, one of the largest that we have identified other than, of course, the digital ID are the techno parks. Now, why, why do you want, why does a government want to uh, spend or invest on a, on a huge amount of money for techno parks? There are a few areas that we have identified that would help by establishing these techno parks. I would not go into detail, but I would just explain a few points on the technology. As, as we all know, we have the right kind of resources in Sri Lanka. We are some of the brightest kids in, this, in the world in Sri Lanka. And most of these kids in the, in the past as a tradition, the practice has been once they come to a stage where they are completely uh, developed as a person, they migrate out of this country. Uh, this is a major concern for all of us. So technology parks that we are starting in five major locations in this country would pave the way for these young kids who are bright kids to get employed in some of the best uh, 
companies in the world. We are discussing with some of the huge, large companies and we have been very successful. Even at the moment, we have managed to secure three large companies to establish their operations in these technoparks. Now, in these technoparks, as you all explained earlier, we would concentrate on high-end technology. Please understand these are not IT parks. These are technology parks. We want to bring, as Renuka was explaining, we want to bring agriculture, technology diffusion, education, research labs, innovation labs to these techno parks. And we feel that first phase, we are targeting 12,500 such uh, uh, opportunities for our young and uh, for our technology uh, uh, guys in, in this country. I'm talking very briefly about it just to give you an example. As Renuka said, she knows it, that we are going in a big way in a project called Connect Sri Lanka. We are determined to provide 4G facilities by end 2021, 2022, December, for the whole country. We have already have economic points, economic centers connected, 5G connected. We, have, we were the, one of the first in the, in the region. So all these technology parks would have superb connections, including 5G. Education is one of the areas that this government is concentrating heavily building capacity in parallel to the requirement is a prime important factor. We are very pleased to mention that we are connecting 12,500 schools by, with fiber optic connectivity by first quarter of next year. This is a huge project. And by this, we would be able to, even with this uh, pandemic situation easing off, this will be the future and we have understood it and all 12,000 schools in this country would be connected with fiber optic connectivity. This is an extremely huge project and a huge investment that we are doing. We are also uh, automating the courts of this country. Transparency is a huge requirement and we are connecting three, all 360 courts of this country and every proceeding would be voice recorded as well as video recorded. We would be bringing total transparency to people and we would facilitate a new method in the courts where one could, should not, would not be compelled to visit courts. This is one of the most modern uh, systems in the world that we are hoping to finish by end of next year. Sri Lanka has about 25,000 villages and administratively it is divided into 14,000 or approximately 14,000 administrative small divisions called Gram and Iladari. We are connecting all 14,000 of such officers called Gram and Iladari into one uh, connect, uh, and providing them with taps. This project is on the way and we will be finishing in six months time. So there are huge projects that we are doing to enable our citizens and our uh, people of this country, giving the facility of not only tech IT, but technology. We are co co connecting nanotechnology. We are connecting biotechnology, which comes under, under this ministry connecting them into this web, uh, into these techno parks. One of the key areas that we have understood is connectivity, as I said. We are getting the private sector into this model and we are inviting the private sector. As Renuka would know, we are already going in a huge plan with towers, connecting towers all around the country. 
and get subsidizing these towers uh, to the private sector. So these projects that we have planned, obviously we want to complete all these projects that I have mentioned by end of December next year. It's a tough call. It's no doubt it's a tough call. But as the Ministry of Technology, we are very confident. We have the funds, we have the people, we have the will to do it. And we hope by end of next year that we would be able to complete all these projects I mentioned just now. One of the key things that we are concentrating is to build capacity. And we are starting from the very schools with startups. Startups are going to be one of the key integral part of this whole ecosystem. We have been, Sri Lanka has been one of the key, uh, few countries that startups have been a success. We are planning to start 1,500 startups by next June. And out of these 1,000 would be IT based, IT based, and the other would be on, non, on technology, non IT. We have already commenced this project from schools and the ICT agency, which is the apex body for ICT, ITBPM in Sri Lanka, is responsible, which again comes under this ministry. We have, we have started, we have already demarcated two major areas to da, start the startups. And once they are matured, we are hoping them to migrate into the techno parks. So we have planned all this and we are very confident that we can we will achieve it. We are determined and we hope that organizations like you would we would be able to work with you all because IEEE is one of the most recognized and the largest uh, entities uh, uh, international uh, entities internationally and we hope we can connect and work together. So I thank you again for the for all concerned who have made this possible. And I also wish you, wish the conference all the success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Very much appreciated. We all understand how busy are you, but it's very important to give us a guidance and insight and the strategic pathway, what would be the Sri Lankan digital transformation, how bring all the clusters to, together, education to agriculture to medical. And thank you very much for your time and really, really appreciate your insightful uh, session. Sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the last leg of the today, very eventful day and uh, very important session of the ICI AFS 2021 and in summation bring everything together what would be the government of Sri Lanka initiative for the future and as a player in the world a uh, teeny weeny kind of our nation uh, blessed with very much very high literacy rate reasonably well uh, computer literacy IT literacy and then of course our host IEEE and of course our SLTC, we have everything, one, one thing in common. Bring the innovation, bring the develop the desire ecosystem to the human humanity. In the context of SLTC, Mr. Ranjit Super Singh and all the faculty members and every persons in the university, we are here to facilitate, build the ecosystem to the student. The same way, our all the speech speeches from Mrs. Renuka Fernando to Mr. Ranjit Rupasinghe, our chairman, Mr. Rohan Fernando, and of course, Mr. Jayant De Silva, who's the torch bearer of country's digitization. She has the one common goal. We are in the single page, which we important to all over the world, bring the sustainability to keep mother nature keep the mother earth safe and secure in this not appropriate time for the human being a lot. Therefore, let me invite Dr. 
Sampath Idrisingha, who will take over the session to introduce and read the bio of our keynote speech, which is Future Wireless Communication Towards 2030 by Dr. Pieng Su, Senior Vice President of Wireless Research, Huawei, Canada. Dr. Sampath Idrisingha, over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Leslie. Now we are moving on to one of the most awaited parts of the conference, the keynote speeches. And it is a great honor for me to introduce our distinguished keynote speaker, Dr. Pieng Su from Huawei, Canada. She's the senior vice president of wireless research at Huawei, and she's a fellow of both Huawei and IEEE. And she's currently leading the 5G wireless research and standardization in Huawei. The focus of her research is 5G new radio access technologies and beyond. She's actively involved in 3GPP and IEEE 802 standards development. Prior to joining Huawei in 2009, Piang was a Nortel Fellow and a Director of Advanced Wireless Access Technology in Nortel Wireless Technology Lab. She led the team and pioneered research and prototyping on MIMO OFDM and multi-hop relay. Many of these technologies developed by the by her team have been adopted in LTE standards and 4G products. And in her wonderful career, Dr. Su has more than 200 granted patents. And today we have the we have the pleasure of having Dr. Su and she will share her vision for wireless communication for the next decade specifically focusing on the potential new services, requirements, challenges, and enabling services. So Dr. Su will help you extend your understanding on beyond 5G systems. So without further ado, let me hand it over to Dr. Su. One, my name is Pei Yin Zhu. I'm from Huawei, Canada. Currently, I am leading Huawei's uh, 6G research. I would like to thank ICIFS meeting organizers for providing me this opportunity to talk. I'm sorry that I cannot give this uh, presentation live due to uh, unexpected travel. My email address is listed here in case you have any questions or comments. In this talk, I will first introduce an overall vision of 6G, then discuss key features and research challenges. With the rapid emerging 5G commercialization, not only people will be better connected with enhanced capabilities such as a faster speed and a low, lower latency, more and more things are being connected. We are moving from a connected society toward connected everything. This will eventually enable every business to achieve digitization for the next wave of economic growth. This trend will continue beyond 2030, where 6G is expected to emerge. In our perspective, 6G will go far beyond communications. 6G will serve as a distributed neural network that provides communication links to fuse the physical cyber and biological words, leading to an era in which everything will be sensed, connected, and intelligent. In other words, 6G will transform from connected people, connected things, to connected intelligence. We envision that 6G will have a, a rich set of devices with various integrated sensing capabilities. For example, a human with wearable devices and embedded chips measuring biosignals, a car detecting obstacles, integrated satellites equipped with remote sensing capability. The sensed data are uploaded to base stations, which also have AI and sensing capabilities called a neural edge in the picture. The combined sensing data from uh, devices and uh, neural edges are sent to a neural center 
where learning and magic of in inferencing will be done. The inferencing results are then sent via wireless downlink to devices to enable devices to perform whatever magic actions accordingly. Of course, some of learning and inferencing can be done locally at devices and by neural edges. In this case, distributed inferencing or federated learning can be used to reduce the amount of data transmitted, reduce latency, and preserve data privacy. Device will send learning results instead of raw sensed data. Combining sensing data from devices and neural edges, it is possible to build a replica of a physical, biological world in cyberspace. The actions can be simulated in the cyberspace before applying them on physical entities to improve the efficiency and safety. With such a system, one can imagine many new applications and there are plenty of opportunities for innovation. We see six key features for 6G as shown in this diagram. First, native AI. Second, network sensing. Third, extreme connectivity. Fourth, integrated non-terrestrial network. Fifth, native trustworthiness. Six, sustainability. I will provide more details on these six features in the remaining of the talk. AI machine learning can be used as a tool to improve communication performance and to automate network management. This is what we call AI for net. With 6G, network nodes, including terminals, will have built-in AI cap computing capabilities. These can be leveraged to provide distributed learning and inferencing. And this is what we called net for AI. Native AI will support both AI for net and net for AI functions. Machine learning has been and will be used for 5G to enhance the operation efficiency of the network and optimize the performance of the physical layer modules. For example, 5G has a few hundreds operation parameters to config. Machine learning can be used to automate the parameter configuration. The radio resource management is another area where machine learning can be used to optimize the system performance. On the physical layer, machine learning can be used for MIMO decoder, channel estimation. Going forward, we need to move beyond module level optimization and utilize AI machine learning to design intelligent end-to-end -end communication link. In today's network, machine learning is typically done in the cloud. Communication network is a vehicle to carry the data, inferencing results, and a model. 6G network element will natively integrate communication, computing, and sensing capabilities, enabling the distributed learning and inferencing, facilitating the evolution from centralized intelligence in the cloud to ubiquitous intelligence on deep edges. A distributed machine learning architecture built on deep edge intelligence will be the key to meet the large-scale intelligence requirements of future society and manufacturing. In today's communication system design, we typically separate the source coding from channel coding. We understand the limit of both with entropy and mutual information, which leads to some optimized system design close to channel limit. But for the purpose of communicating and understanding, this type of uh, bit level information communication is not always needed. Human can understand each other with far less information. 
Dr. Weaver defined three levels of communications, technical, semantic, and effectiveness. Our communication design is still at level one. If we study AI together with communication, maybe it is possible to actually achieve a semantic level of communication. One example is a machine learning based joint source and channel coding to achieve much higher data compression rate. Information bottlenecks theory may be used to guide a semantic communication design. Given the increasing concerns on the data privacy, the exponentially increasing amount of data volume, and low latency requirements of many AI applications, and the current centralized cloud AI training model will not be able to sustain. Distribute the learning and inferencing of reasonable assumptions instead of centralized learning. In the future, both edge nodes and devices will have building AI computing hardware and sensing capabilities. Given the high computing demands, a federated learning and inferencing could leverage all available computing resources. Therefore, the integrated communication and computing will be the key to enable this. 6G architecture should allow joint private and public operation. Ideally, private infrastructure can deal with operations of more private and sensitive parts. With such architecture, benefits are obvious, such as privacy protection, low latency, um, platform and AI as services. On the other hand, there are many challenges such as uh, increased communication burden for exchanging machine learning models, how to achieve a similar performance as a centralized training with distributed learning, how to coordinate communication and computing resources, how to ensure integrity for distributed learning, and a power consumption as well. Sensing is not entirely new. There are many existing sensing technologies. In our context, we are interested in IF sensing, i.e. utilizing the communication radio signal for sensing purpose. There are two types of sensing, device-free and device-based sensing. Device-free sensing refers to the case where the target is not connected to network, while device-based sensing refers to the case where the target is connected to the network. The former is uh, similar to the radar, while the latter is uh, similar to the cellular positioning. Radar can be monostatic, where transmitter and the receiver are co-located, or biostatic where transmitter and the receiver are not co-located. Similarly, device-free sensing can be co-located or distributed. ISAC will support both device-based and device-free sensing, co-located or distributed. The use of a high-frequency band from millimeter wave up to tel telehertz wide bandwidth and a denser distribution of massive antenna arrays in future systems will enable the integration of wireless signal sensing and communication in a system to mutually enhance each other. On one hand, the communication system as a whole can serve as a sensor. It can explore the radio wave transmission, reflection scattering to sense and better understand the physical world, providing a broad range of new services. On the other hand, sensing could help improving the communication performance, such as more accurate beam forming, faster beam failure recovery, and less overhead to track the channel state information. The integration of sensing and communication functions can happen at different levels from loosely coupled to fully integrated, from shared spectrum, shared hardware, 
to share the signal processing and the protocol stacks and even cross-module, cross-layer information sharing, benefiting one another. We are interested in more tight integration. With a networked sensor, one can envision many use cases. Instead of a long list, we um, group them into four categories. First, high accuracy localization and the tracking. 6G will further improve the localization accuracy from a meter level to centimeter level. With such capability, then a, a robot can perform device level, even module level installation and placement in tight spaces. In addition to the absolute positioning, high accuracy relative positioning could enable mu multiple fast-moving targets coordination, such as the autonomous uh, uh, docking of a drone to a moving car, coordinated flying, combining AI and the localization. Semantic localization could be used for machine communications. The second usage category is the city mapping and environmental reconstruction. With a multi-level vertical cellular network and a ubiquitous coverage of a cellular system, both passive and active sensing can be used to create a detailed live city map, including buildings, bridges, and cars. This type of map could be used for many smart city services such as virtual city planning with impact studies, on-demand maintenance, traffic control, etc. and autonomous driven cars, of course. The third category is augmented human sensing. Augmented human sensing aims to provide a safe, high precision as well as low power sensing and imaging capability that exceeds human abilities. For example, equipped with a mobile device with such sensing capability, a human can see beyond the eye with ultra high resolution, see things in the dark, behind the wall, under skin, in other words, making invisible visible. A spectrogram analysis for air quality detection, explosive and gas detection, flaw detection in manufacturing, and uh, carefully scanning for the food we are eating. Gesture and activity recognition. High frequency band in 6G will enable higher resolution and accuracy in order to capture finer activities and gestures. It enables contactless control with macro recognition or micro recognition. Many applications can be used with such capabilities in a smart hospital or a smart home. Examples in a hospital are for detection and gesture and movement recognition, which are useful for patient rehabilitation. Intrusion detection, useful for controlling unwanted access, sneezing and coughing detection, very useful for virus detection in today's environment. Examples for a smart home are light on and off, TV control with hand waving, virtual piano playing, combining some identity recognition using AI to allow individual recognize the control to avoid interference. To realize this capability, many problems need to be resolved first. As an example, we need to understand the basic signal design, such as waveform design, sequence design, since traditionally signals for communications and sensing have different design objective functions. The link budget aspects because device-free sensing and communication link have different coverage range and may require full duplex operation. We need to look in the procedure and uh, um, protocol design for coordinated and uh, collaborative sensing. Sensing info can be used to assist communication in order to 
improve the communication performance. There are many studies in this area. Some examples are shown here, sensing assisted channel acquisition, sensing assisted beam forming, beam alignment, interference avoidance, etc. Also, typically these study assume certain sensing info are given then we can uh, we may see the benefit of uh, um, communication performance for isaac sensing will utilize the communication resources so the challenge is to have performance gain considering the sensing overhead in addition to the examples mentioned before there are many other challenges and the research opportunities for example, we need to understand new sensing key performance indicators, new channel models, and system level evaluation methodologies. Theoretical framework allowing us to jointly optimize sensing and communication. Hardware core design, telehealth communication and sensing, data fusion of multiple sensing results, privacy and the security aspects, of course, power consumption as well. Some of these uh, details are explained in one of the IEEE Isaac webinar listed below, which is available now on the YouTube. 6G will provide a universal high performance wireless connections and ultimate experience with speeds comparable to optical fibers. This will not only enable human-centric immersive services in the future, but also accelerate full-scale digital transmission and the productivity upgrade of vertical industry. With 5G, AR VR is one of very popular applications. We expect consumers will demand even more immersive multimedia experience including ultimate immersive uh, cloud AR VR, glass-free 3D holographic displays, and uh, haptic or multi-sensory communications. For vertical industry, we expect 6G will enable applications like, like a collaborate, collaborative robots in future factories, haptic uh, remote teleoperations in future hospitals. We improve communication system in the order of magnitude with each generation. We expect that the 6G will continue such trend. 6G will provide uh, extreme connectivities with uh, telebots per second peak date rate, 10 to 100 gigabits per second experienced user rate, sub-millisecond level latency, and a 10 uh, 10 times increase uh, in, in terms of uh, connection density, centimeter level localization, and a millimeter level imaging. End-to-end -end system reliability based on controllable error distribution and um, very high energy efficiency. Six G will integrate terrestrial and non-terrestrial networks. A large number of uh, low orbiting, low Earth orbit satellites will be deployed to form a mega satellite constellation in the non-terrestrial network. This airborne wireless network will expand the coverage of the terrestrial cellular infrastructure and empower the new low latency solutions for ultra long haul transmission. To provide continuous high quality services to users anywhere on Earth, both networks are expected to be de deeply integrated as one system, where the terrestrial and the non terrestrial network nodes can be treated as base station in a similar way, enabling users to leverage the advantage of each type in different service conditions. Video constellation can provide a low latency service to customer anywhere on Earth. As an example in this diagram, with SpaceX constellation, 
video latency can be lower even than fiber link with proper routing algorithm design. Here we show an example of the application for video satellite band pipe transparent forward. Within 500 kilo radius, we can compute UIL services at edge computing center and use band pipe to control the autonomous driving. Of course, the NTN can complement terrestrial network in certain remote areas, hence realize the full Earth coverage vision of 6G. With integrated non-terrestrial network, the connection to the NTN or, or terrestrial network can be transparent to a user. Long-haul low-latency application is very crucial for certain applications. Trustworthiness is characterized by five major aspects, security, privacy, resilience, safety, and reliability. The first three are established by cryptography and defense technologies, hence are primary aspects from technology point of view. A native trustworthiness architecture is the one which meets the characteristics of security, privacy, and resilience based on an inclusive trust model. The existing trust model is a centralized trust model where user trust is endorsed by the corresponding subscriber um, mobile operator who purchased and deploy network equipment that has already passed the tests and verification. This model has challenges to establish an open ecosystem. A new multilateral model could be used to allow multiple possibility of trust. Bridge model. In this mode, establish a trusted bridge between entity A and B through uh, the authorization framework with a central authority, such as the security police center or, or security management of user profile. Trust will be obtained from the current telecom trust model. The consensus in this model transactions are attestable and the responsibility are shared by multiple parties. High efficiency and scalability will be provided as a main feature of this model, matching the agile and the tailored access requirement of 6 Endorsement, this refers to the mode in which uh, authoritative third-party measures and evaluates network trustworthiness. For example, as shown in the picture, party B could invite a third party to confirm if party A is trustworthy, and the third party could endorse party A. To realize native trustworthiness, some new technologies, as shown in this table, could be considered. Quantum resisted security, such as a lattice based cryptography and one time pad key physical security, or digital ledger technologies, which can handle low latency, high throughput with low power consumption. Multi user quantum entanglement key distribution and a quantum relay and a switching. Sustainability is a central topic for 6G, particularly in terms of energy consumption across the entire network and associated ICT infrastructure and devices. The total power consumption shouldn't exceed the previous generations. 6G will be designed with the ultimate goal of social, environmental, and economic sustainability. There is a need to establish an industrial consensus on the methodology for the evaluation of sustainability. 
With deep learning, computing demand doubles every three months. In fact, it is difficult to keep up this demand with computing hardware. We need to solve this complexity maybe by learning architecture and uh, algorithms instead of solely relying on semiconductors advancement. The other issue is related to the low efficiency for millimeter wave IF amplifier, where power um, amplifier efficiency is at a single digital level. At the same time, we need to overcome additional path loss of high frequency. Given the time limitation, I only highlighted a few key things on 6G. Some additional info and details can be found in this book our team wrote last year, which is now available. This concludes my talk. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Su, for the insightful keynote speech. And I'm sure that you have inspired many researchers, especially young researchers in the audience, to get involved in beyond 5G research. And unfortunately, we don't have Dr. Su online today. So if you have any questions, please just type them in the chat box, and we will forward them to Dr. Su and uh, make the answers available in the website, or probably send it directly to you and yes thanks thanks very much again dr su for accepting our invitation and delivering this inspiring keynote and now i will hand the session over to uh, mr leslie to conclude the inauguration ceremony over to you, mr leslie <clears throat> uh thank you uh, dr sampath uh, are we having a special sessions also dr sampath subsequently Yes, Mr. Leslie, we have these special sessions at 10 a.m., starting at virtual room number four. Okay, thank you. I hope it will also continue smoothly. Everyone is aware of that now. Okay, we are, we are here now. I mean, it was very inspiring speech. I mean, uh, especially latter part of this speech, uh, sustainability and in, uh, integrating sensing control, those things will tell us the, what would be the future and the latest uh, latency reduced level and the energy consumption will look after mother nature i hope so that would be the name of the game of the 6g and therefore let me conclude that with the sustainability note that sensing technology sensors are all over will tell us the story of our breathing air what will be the, our forest density what would be the our forest coverage. And then it will make sure that 5G, 6G enable environment ecosystem makes not only human life easier, all the creatures in the world. And end of the day, we don't have any other place to go. It is only the one earth. And keeping that remarks, let me thank everyone to support us, especially for the last uh, uh, airing of Dr. Su. Uh, Dr. Sampat and uh, my colleague Hassan Haider, thank you very much for your support also. And everyone, uh, this is really, really good session we had, uh, encouraging everyone to think, think differently, act differently, and research differently, and make sustainable living last longer. Thank you very much. I'm Leslie Udua Vidana, signing off from ICIFS 2021 session. Thank you. Thank you again.